Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 117. Common Courtesy. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my polite and well-mannered co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How are you doing today, sweetheart? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing all right. Doing all right. Anything exciting this week? Actually, yes. Well, what was that? Um, I'm now going to, um, I'm now going to band every Tuesday and Wednesday night. For marching band practice. Okay, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Learning new music and dance, I guess, steps, marching steps and stuff. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Okay. We actually had to kind of change our schedule a bit. Um, now, I do. Our, we're going to do our podcast on Thursdays while Mommy's is on Wednesdays. Right. We were doing our Insights into Teens Wednesdays. Uh, your band schedule is Tuesday and Wednesday. So we swapped that over. To mommy's, which is now, she's on Wednesday for entertainment, Mm -hmm. and Thursday we're doing teens, and this weekend we'll actually be shooting uh, our next episode of Insights into tomorrow, and then next week we're actually off. We're taking time off. Um, We're kind of on vacation, but we're not really going anywhere for vacation, Um, but we'll be doing some changes in the studio here, and as a result, I don't think we'll be ready to shoot by the time our regular schedule comes up. Yeah. So just a programming note that we won't be going live next week, but uh, we should be live the following week. I expect to get everything done by the following week, but there is an outside chance that we won't. But that's not what we're talking about today. (laughs) So in today's episode, we're going to discuss one of the most basic things we can impart on our teens, common courtesy. It's a topic that's often overlooked and taken for granted but one that can have a profound impact on our lives at just about any age. We'll discuss how common courtesy has slipped during the digital age. Then we'll look at some of the most basic forms of common courtesy, most of which are very easy to follow and have long-lasting benefits. And finally, we'll discuss how to encourage your teens to practice common courtesy in the future. But before we do that, I would invite our listening and video viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens and video versions of all the network's podcasts you can find listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, pretty much any place you can get a podcast. I would also invite our audience to uh, give us some feedback, write in, tell us how we're doing, give us some show topics. We're always looking for new things to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can get us on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, we're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, you can find us at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can go to our website for all those links and more at www.insightsintothings.com. Ready to get started? Yep. All right, here we go. So common courtesy should not be an uncommon virtue. And you know what I mean by that? Um, basically, it should be well known by everyone. Exactly. Like everyone should know the basics of common courtesy you should know how to be polite. You should know how to, how to uh, behave in a public setting, how to talk to people, how to, how to have a conversation. A lot of people don't even know how to have a conversation anymore. 
Um, and, and a lot of these things are things that help us socially. They may help us academically, and they certainly help us professionally. Uh, there's a whole other topic of professional courtesy that we can get into that we're not going to talk about today. But the basic courtesy skills that we should all know are things that will help us in pretty much every facet of our lives. When most parents think about teaching manners, they envision telling preschoolers to say please and thank you and, and things like that. And, and that's good. I'm not saying don't do that. But good manners go far beyond those words. And it's important to make sure you're teaching your child good manners into their teen years and beyond. Common courtesy is something that isn't really taught in school, but something that kids are expected to practice anyway. That expectation is fueled typically by example, but not by rote teaching. Like they don't have um, etiquette class or anything like that anymore. They used to years ago, but they don't do any of that now. Mm. So as a result, what's considered common courtesy doesn't have a particularly well-defined standard. What I might think is polite, somebody else might not necessarily think it is. So adding to this lack of formal standard or instruction in courtesy is the complications of growing up with today's technological advancements. What are some of the things that we run into with that? In the digital age, many teens aren't learning basic social skills like cell phone, cell phone el- etiquette. There are ma- and there are many manners teens often forget even though they've learned them in the past. Sometimes teens go through phases where they want to look cool and manners go out the window. At other times, they get a little sloppy and forget to be polite. Raising a kind and caring teen who uses good manners could be very beneficial to their future. Teens with good manners will command more respect which could help them socially, academically, and professionally in years to come. So do you think that you have good manners? Do you think that you're, uh, you practice common courtesy? I think for the most part I do. There's probably some things I'm kind of lackluster on, but I do kind of consider myself to be polite in most instances. And I would tend to agree. Um, you're appreciative when people do things for you. You are, you don't interrupt, you know, you, you wait for an opportune moment in which to inject yourself into a conversation. You do say thank you when people do things for you. You say please when you ask for something. So I'm, I'm confident that you have most of the basics down. And I think a lot of that has to do just with seeing how mommy and I behave. You know, a lot of times we joke around and we're not formal. I certainly wouldn't say that we're formal when it comes to courtesies and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, when I say formal, one of the things we'll talk about later is something like writing thank you notes. We don't really do that as much as we used to. We probably should. You know, when someone, for instance, uh, GMA sends you a, a birthday present. And when I was a kid... You know, my mom would sit down with me and we would write out a letter to that person and we would thank them and give them an update on how we're doing and things like that. And it was, it was how you communicated back in the day. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, what do you, what do you do when GMA sends you a birthday present? I typically go on my phone and text her saying thank you. Right. And, and while that's effective, it kind of lacks that, that personal touch, you know, Even if you picked up the phone and called her and talked to her, that lack of uh, real-time two-way communication, not that the letter gave you that, but you would wind up putting a lot more into a letter than you would into a text message. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of some of the things that we're talking about where that's a little bit more on the formal side. Um, But some of the things that we're going to talk about today are more basic stuff. Like when you do something wrong, you apologize. And we we kind of talked about that in a previous podcast. If you do something wrong, you should apologize. And you should do it not because mommy and daddy told you to. You should do it because it's the right thing. And I think a lot of people lose out on common courtesy 
because common courtesy is often the right thing to do and, and people don't realize it is. Mm -mm. Uh, do you think mommy and daddy practice common courtesy? Yeah, I would consider you two being very polite. Um, probably where I got it from, you know. Um, you guys have taught me, have basically shown and taught me how to be respectful and some of the basic kinds of common courtesy. So I definitely think that you both are very polite and courteous when it comes to this. So how about school? Do they teach courtesy in school or do they try to enforce courtesy in school? Not well, basically the only real common courtesy is not interrupting the teacher and raising your hand if you have a question. And that's kind of it mostly. They don't really, like we said before, they don't really teach us a lot of uh, common courtesies in school except for that one time where we were doing like soup etiquette like for an ELA class. Um, but, but do they expect common courtesy? Like for instance, the, the biggest one that I come up with and you just mentioned is disrespect. If you disrespect an adult, what do they do? How do they react? Is there punishment involved? Is there lecturing? What do they do? Yeah, there's typically some form of punishment, probably detention being one of them, or like a strike or something. But there is always typically a punishment for disrespecting an adult. So the the expectation that you have courtesy is there and respect, but the definition of it really is never given. It's never taught. So you're kind of expected to figure that out on your own, which is what it sounds like. I mean, they kind of tell you, like, what you're expected to do. They don't, like, spell it out for you. They just give you it, and you're supposed to know what not to do because you learn the punishments of it and everything. So so their, their way of teaching you is teaching you by negative reinforcement. So if you do something bad, you get punished for it, not... This is how you should be, or you get punished. How do you know not to do something until you do it and you're punished? Like, what's the what's the preventative action there? Like, if you say something, you know, rude to a teacher that you've never said before, and they just give you detention on the spot for that, how do you know not to say that in the first place? Um, I mean, you guys, you've kind of... You guys were the ones who taught me to never really say that, and I guess teachers kind of assume that parents teach their kids or it's, kids are expected to be polite and such. And I think that's that's kind of the point that I'm getting at here is that that's something teachers, the school system is assuming that teachers are doing or that, that parents are doing. And in reality, a lot of parents aren't doing that, unfortunately. So as a result, the kids never get taught what common courtesy is and their parents may not practice common courtesy. So when they go out into the real world, they run into problems. Now you had mentioned soup etiquette. What, what were you talking about? I think I have an idea of what you're talking about, but explain that. Um, it was basically, um, I think it was, it had to do with a certain book we were reading, but it was like, we were learning like, stuff about etiquette and we were watching a video on how to how people properly eat soup and kind of like thinking what we thought was strange about it because it was really not how a lot of us ate soup so so what do they tell you um i remember one was um you have to hold your spoon kind of like sideways in your hand and then you scoop it up from the you scoop it up from one end to the other, and you only feel the spoon um, two thirds of the way. And um, uh, and what you pour it in your mouth, you don't slurp it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was pouring. <laughs> yeah, and that kind of goes back to the <clears throat> etiquette classes that I was referring to, where they would teach rules like that. They would teach posture rules. You know, when you sit in your chair, you should sit, you know, straight up. Your back should be straight. And they would go so far as to teach young girls to walk with, with poised posture 
by having a stack of books or something on their head and they couldn't let them fall off. And that's really, that was kind of a product of the Victorian age of how to do all that stuff. And by the time I reached school, they had, they had done away with most of that. Although in some of the religious studies that, that my parents had been involved in, you still address some of that stuff. And that's not what we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the common courtesies. So let's take a little break and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some of the basic manners that teens should know. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking common courtesy. So basic manners teens should know. Sometimes teens need a little refresher on the basic manners department. It's easy for them to develop a few bad habits when hanging out with their peers, or they might get a little lazy from time to time. Here are some basic manners you should ensure your teens use on a regular basis. And really, most of these are no-brainer, self-explanatory type things everyone should, and, and for the most part, probably do adhere to. The first one we talked about already, and that's apologizing when you've done something wrong. Not only is it the polite thing to do, but it also has a, um, a beneficial effect, both physiologically and psychologically, on you when you do something wrong. Yeah. Otherwise, you walk around with all that guilt. Yeah. Um, the next one is ask permission to do things, which, you know, anyone who just decides that they're going to take something of yours or go someplace that they're not invited to go to, there's a social problem that arises from that immediately. Mm -hmm. Don't answer calls when they're in the middle of a face-to-face -face conversation. This is basic phone etiquette here. Uh, we have a rule that we don't answer the phone during dinner time. You know, simple things like that that you can reinforce with your kids just as common courtesy will help them throughout life. Mm -hmm. uh, refrain from texting and using social media when talking to people face to face. There's nothing more annoying than having a conversation with someone and their face is glued to their phone and they're playing a game or texting or doing something. And you know that they're not paying attention to you. Mm. Um, it, that's annoying to me. Maybe I'm just old and I don't get it, but what else do we have? Um, next up, we have keep their hand to themselves and don't grab things out of people's hands, which is probably a very good thing considering the pandemic. Oh, uh, that's that's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, um, that was one of the things that school did instill in us, especially when we were younger, because kids would take things from other kids and basically... You had to not do that because you would get the other kid upset and such, and it would cause conflicts. So um, that's something they instilled in us when we were younger. And, you know, growing up with three older brothers, that was a lesson that I, that was a hard lesson I had to learn. <laughs> uh, next up, we have say excuse me when they need to interrupt or if they accidentally bump into someone. Again, that's a no brainer. Yeah. You don't just barge into a conversation. Yep. Uh, next up is make eye contact in conversations. This is something I kind of struggle with for the most part because I get scared when people stare me in the eye. Well, and this is one of those ones that I think a lot of people take for granted. One thing you'll find is that as you're having a conversation with someone, if you're looking at them, 
and you're engaging with them. In fact, there was a, a Geico commercial, you know, the, the eye contact one with the, with the gecko where it's like, oh, we had a moment there. And you really do when you have a conversation with someone and you engage them with your eyes. Now, the one thing that I told you is if you're not comfortable looking at someone's eyes, look at their mouth. One thing that I found because I have some issues with hearing is sometimes I don't hear everything that people say, especially if it's in a crowded room. It's difficult for me to distinguish uh, individual sounds. So what I find is if I'm in a crowded room having a conversation, I'll watch someone's mouth as they talk. This way, there's a chance that if I mishear something, I can kind of see what they're saying. I don't read lips proficiently, but I can see how they're forming their words, and then I can kind of figure it out. But at the same time, I'm looking directly at them, and they see that, and they know that I'm engaged in the conversation. What else do we have? Next up, we have wait their turn to speak in a conversation. Kind of the same thing with the whole excuse me thing, except it's not about bumping into someone. Exactly. Uh, next up, we have say please and thank you when it's appropriate. Now, this one, I think pretty much everyone knows to do this. I think these are probably the most overlooked or forgotten ones that you have. A lot of times you're in a hurry. A lot of times the person that you're with is probably someone that you're very familiar with and they know that you're thankful for what they did or what they gave you. But that's really not a reason not to say thank you, is it? Yeah. So this is one that you can you can kind of train yourself very easily by doing it over and over again. And if you do it with the people that you're most familiar with, then you'll know automatically to do it with strangers or, or people that you interact with outside your immediate friends and, friends and family. Mm -hmm. The next one is another important one that we talk about, and that is to shake hands when greeting someone. Now, again, pandemic in mind here, you kind of have to be careful. Right now, a lot of people are bumping elbows, fist bumping, tapping feet, you know, stuff like that. The fact that people go to that extent during the pandemic tells you how important this simple act alone is. Mm -hmm. And that interpersonal relationship is pretty much universal. Every culture, every country uses it. So it's a very common form of greeting. And it's actually one that goes back with quite a tradition into the Middle Ages and, and probably even further back. And that was when you would greet an enemy, you would show them that you have an empty hand. You don't have a weapon in your hand. And that eventually evolved into just a greeting at that point where you would shake hands. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize that. So it's a basic human instinct that you're kind of exposing yourself and making yourself vulnerable by shaking someone's hand. And when you do it, it should be a firm handshake. You don't want to hand somebody a wet noodle handshake type thing. So, you know, you can go into the details of how to shake a hand. But that's something to keep in mind. The next is take care of basic hygiene, including coughing into your elbow and covering your mouth when you sneeze. Again, thinking with the pandemic around, it highlighted how significant that was to people. You walk into a, a, a room of people and you start coughing or sneezing, You'll clear a room out nowadays, <clears throat> and you you freak people out. Um, but you know you're doing that out of a courtesy for them to prevent spe spreading germs to them, whether it's a pandemic or not. Use appropriate language and answer questions when asked. Now, now let me stop for there a second. There's a little bit more here, but let me stop there. When they say that. Answer questions when asked. Avoid answering a question with a question. That That is a, a big etiquette no-no when you do that. Mm. You know, somebody says, uh, where are you today? And you answer with, well, why are you asking? That's a big no-no. Mm. So if you don't want to answer the question completely honestly, you can answer with non-relevant information. Where were you today? Oh, I was out. But you don't answer with, why do you want to know? So that's one important thing to, to keep in mind. Mm. 
And they go on to say, avoid using slang words and resorting to vulgarity, even in a casual setting. Now, it's difficult to not use slang with your friends. Everyone has their own little language they communicate with. Um, and into adulthood, it's difficult to not feel so comfortable around someone that you'll use vulgarity, not for the sake of vulgarity, but a lot of times people will use swear words to emphasize things or to express outrage or something like that. They use it kind of like exclamation points. Mm -hmm. You should try to avoid that because if you get into the habit of doing that around the people that you see on a regular basis, there's a very good chance that that's going to slip when you're in an audience that you don't want that thing sort of language to come across. So if you kind of keep a muzzle on the slang and the bad words with friends, then you'll instinctively do that outside of that enclosed environment. Okay. Use proper table manners when eating. Don't reach in front of someone. Elbows are off the table and don't slouch. I'm not going to preach beyond that because I'm not the best person when it comes to table matters. Yeah. And the last one here we talked about already is the right thank you notes to people who give you gifts. That's just a really nice personal way of thanking someone. Texting's okay, but think of the last time you got a letter in the mail. How did it make you feel to know that somebody took the time to sit down, write the letter out, address an envelope, put a stamp on it, and drop it in the mailbox? That says a lot more about what that person's thinking of you than when they jot off a 140-character text message on their phone, right? Yeah. So that's where common courtesy really comes in. It, it really helps to express your feelings, your thoughts, and your consideration for other people. What about the digital world? So in our digital world, it's easy for teens to lose sight of basic manners. But grunting when grandma asks a question or texting when eating a meal is rude. So it's important to teach your teen how to communicate, interact, and respond to others in a polite and kind manner. And, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the old man card here again. One of the things that people find as they get older is they slow down. You know, the, your, your perception of time slows down the older that you get. So what for you, you know, three months might seem like an agonizingly long wait to get to summer. For someone that's older and even older than me, three months is a blink of an eye. So when people take the time to actually slow down and communicate and have a conversation or write a letter, that means a lot more to older people than it does to younger people because younger people their perception of time is very different than older folks. So for younger folks, everything's quick. Do this, do that, take shortcuts. You know, um, I don't have time to do things. I'm, I'm busy. I got stuff going on. And you do. But if you're dealing with a grandparent or an older parent or a colleague at work or a teacher at school, you have to kind of keep in mind in the back of your mind that they don't go through the same type of things that you do. So you, you kind of have to operate at their level to a certain point so that they understand that you do appreciate them. Mm -hmm. You know, when Jima, you know, makes you a blanket and sends that to you rather than taking 15 minutes to run to the store and buy something, it took like man hours, hours and hours to make a present like that. That's how much time she's invested in making something for you. That's a huge investment. Mm -hmm. And you, at that point in time, need to make a big deal about it. It deserves to have a big deal made about it. Yes. Because of how much she she thought of you to do that. Definitely. Um, so that's sort of, you kind of have to keep things in a perspective. That's really what I'm getting at there. Okay. So how do you think you've done with these common courtesies that we talked about here? Do you think you're... you're on par? Do you think you're failing? Do you think you need to improve in certain areas? So for apologizing when I've done something wrong, I probably do more than apologize, mainly because... You apologize when you do stuff right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I apologize when I kick my trumpet. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, your trumpet doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, so I definitely think I'm good for that one. As per as permission to do things. Yeah, I ask permission to do things even when I don't have to. So yeah, you asked to go to the bathroom when you're at the table. Like, like that's courtesy. That's old school courtesy to ask to get up to use the restroom or something like that. We're not nearly that formal though. Yeah. Uh, don't answer calls when you're in the middle of face to face conversation. I don't really do that because nobody people. calls you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really answer calls unless I'm alone and you guys or my friends are calling me. That's kind of it. Right. Uh, refrain from texting or using social media when talking with people. I do try to stop what I'm doing when you guys are trying to talk to me. Um, That's good. Yeah. Um, I try. I like that. I try to stop. <laughs> Sometimes I just can't resist. No, I'm, I am able to stop, but it does take me some time to hear you. To hear is, is th that's another key thing is with the headphones in, the, the AirPods in, you never hear us. Yeah. Uh, keep hands to themselves. Yeah, I really don't. I'm not grabby with people. No, you're not. In fact, I'm the exact opposite, and I don't really want people touching me. True. <laughs> and it's like very, and like, if I want a hug, then you can get a hug and surprise hugs and stuff like that. I really don't go right. with. Um, say excuse me when you need to interrupt. I don't do that. I'm more than likely you, just you raise, raise your hand, hand and you get a hail hydra. Your turn to talk. <laughs> yeah, like I'm in school because that's what they've taught me. I really, I don't interrupt a lot. Uh, make eye contact. Like I said, I do have problems with that, but I'm trying to take your advice by watching your mouth. Yeah, you're getting better with that. Um, wait their turn to speak in a conversation. I'm incredibly patient when it comes to conversations. You are? Uh, say please and thank you when it's appropriate. Yeah, that's... Never a problem there. Never really a problem. Shake hands when greeting someone new. Uh, I do shake hands when I greet someone new. What? Well... Not with when you, when, when you could. When I could. Um, take care of basic hygiene. Yeah, I try doing that. You know. You wear masks all the time now, too. So. I mean, yeah. Uh, use appropriate language and answer questions. I really don't. You are not a potty mouth. I will give you that. Yeah, I don't blurt out like bad words to people. I do use slang around my friends, but I don't really use it around like older people or anything. Even when you lose your temper, you don't. You don't lose your your control over what you say i give you credit for that yeah somehow don't entirely know i how. don't just so you don't get that <laughs> from me i know uh proper manners um mostly <laughs> uh you, you do wear a lot of your food though and I, we're working on that yeah working on it just learned how to drink from a cup properly, so that's... <laughs> so you had a drinking problem. <laughs> like Different kind of drinking problem. Yeah, different kind of drinking problem. Uh, write thank you notes. I'll probably be doing that a bit more. Um, so yeah, probably pretty good when the spectrum... Yeah, I think for the most part you're pretty good. So let's take our last break here. We'll come back and we'll talk about how to encourage good manners in your teens. Alrighty. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back. Today we are talking about common courtesies, and now we're going to be discussing how to encourage good manners in your teens. 
You can get your teen to use their manners the same way you get them to do anything else. You bribe them. No? That's Were you just a... waiting to say that? Yes, I was. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no. I don't think that's part of this. Anyway, the first thing we have is to be clear about what you expect. That makes perfect sense. And that's kind of what I was saying about with the school. You know, school kind of just assumes you know how to be polite, right? Yeah, kind so of. So you need to explain what you want. What else we got? Next up, we have give your teen consequences when necessary. That's right. Punish them, <laughs> right? When necessary. Speak softly and carry a big stick, Theodore Roosevelt. What? That was, just, that was <laughs> one of his famous sayings, yeah. Okay, then. We're not going to read into that. <laughs> um, model the behavior you want to see. Lead by example. Yeah, pretty much. And I definitely think... So, yeah, that's probably one of the better ones. Yep. Uh, next up, we have talk about, the ven- uh, ba- 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 ba. talk about the benefits of having good manners. Sure. Treat people like you want to be treated yourself. Yeah. I think that's probably the most basic benefit you get from this. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, next up, avoid lecturing your teen or embarrassing them in public when they make a mistake. Is that directly directed at me specifically? <laughs> I mean, considering. <laughs> Instead, have private conversations about their manners when you see a problem. Except to the rule on disrespect. If your teen is disrespectful toward you, intervene right away. Make it clear that you won't tolerate being treated in an unkind manner. Remove your teen's privileges and allow them to earn their privileges back when they behave politely. The biggest, I think, thing here that I've had that I can convey is as a child, my father was, was, no, he was abusive, unfortunately, but he treated my mom really bad. And the funny thing was, is that if any of my brothers raised their voice to my mom or spoke disrespectfully, he would immediately jump to her defense and yell at any of us who were disrespecting her. Yet he didn't practice it himself, hmm. which was kind of annoying. Yeah. Uh, They also say, give your teen opportunities to practice good manners, returning an item to the store, scheduling their own appointment, asking the wait staff for another drink in a restaurant um, from the server. And chances are, you know, for them, it's it's an ability to practice their skills from a social standpoint and from a polite standpoint. Do we do any of these things for you or to you or with you or... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you've ever made me schedule my own appointment. Not yet, no. No. Returning an item to the store, I sometimes go with you when you guys return items to stores. Asking the wait staff for another drink. Um. <laughs> we just want you to ask the wait staff for the food that you want. Yeah. But this is a very good example of why we do that. We don't do that because we don't want to ask them. We do it because it's an, a, it's an excellent opportunity for you to get practice doing it. Mm-hmm. If you don't go out and engage with people and talk to people, whether it's in a professional environment like this or in school or whatever, you'll never get a chance to practice it. And then when you have to do it, like if you have to go for a job interview, you'll – and I've interviewed people who have no social skills whatsoever. And – A job interview, and I've interviewed a lot of people, a job interview is about getting the other person to talk. I need to find out what their personality is. I need to find out what their professional qualifications are, what their background is, what their professional history is. Most people come in with a resume, but that resume doesn't tell me anything about them. One, I have to verify what's on that resume, and I can only do that by talking to them. So when I get people that that are in my office who lack the ability to interact like this because they haven't had the practice, it's exceedingly painful to try and interview someone like that because they don't want to talk. They're terrified to talk. 
So I'm usually a pretty easy interview because I'll spend the first third or, or half of the interview not talking about anything that has to do with the resume or the job or the company or anything. It's just icebreakers to get this person to talk. And once they start talking and they get comfortable, then they open up. Then I can start asking the questions. I just interviewed a guy the other day. He was very nervous when he came in. And it took me about 15, 20 minutes of this interview to finally get him comfortable and realize. And, and again, part of that's probably because I'm very intimidating. Um, in fact, the individual that came in was a, was a very small guy. And, you know, I probably had about two and a half feet of height on the guy. So that tends to put people on the defensive. But the, the moral of the story here is you have to learn these skills. And the time to learn them is when you're a teenager. So if it's a matter of ordering your dinner at the restaurant or asking for a refill that gets you started down that path, it's much better to do it then and flub it and fail and learn from your mistakes than it is when you really need those skills, mm. right? Okay, that works. So what else do we have? Next up we have you can also talk about characters on TV or in movies and how they interact with others. Discuss how manners affect people's lives. When your teen is about to enter a new situation, role play. For example, before they pick up a date for the prom, talk about how to greet their parents. Or before they go to an apartment on their own, role play how to check in at the desk. So a great example of this is just about every sitcom that's on TV. Because every sitcom is based on a, a real-life situation, which is what the sit part of it, situational comedy. Oh. That's what that actually stands for. That's what that stands for. Yes. And what they do is they take an everyday thing that you do, picking a date up for the prom, and they lampoon it. They make fun of it. They tear it apart. They show you all the wrong things to do with it. And... My father was famous for saying, nobody's useless. You can always serve as a bad example. <laughs> and that's what these things do. So they show you a comedic take on how these things happen. And it's a great way to learn what not to do in those circumstances. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that you can learn from these. Even though they're they're fictional and they're, they're made up, the situations themselves are inspired by real-life situations. So that's a great example of that. They also go on to say that when you see your teen display good manners, point it out. And I've always been a f in favor of this. If you do something right, you deserve to have it pointed out and be praised for it. Acknowledge when they're doing a, jo a good job, and they'll be more likely to keep up the good work. Your feedback can be cr a critical component of your teen's ability to learn new manners and sharpen their skills. Now, how do mommy and daddy do with manners if you're not observing manners, or if you are, how do we treat you with that? You always make sure that when I do observe good manners, you do um, compliment me on it and say, hey, you're doing a good job. If I am doing something wrong, you tend to point it out and kind of give me a little lecture about it. And that's what I do. I lecture. I should have been a university professor somewhere. I probably wouldn't have any students in my class, though. Why? Because they wouldn't want to listen to me lecture. <laughs> so overall, how do, do mommy and daddy do setting an example and setting the expectations for you? You probably definitely um, set a good example for me um, and make sure that I am observing proper manners. So I'd say you're pretty good. And I think for the most part, you're fairly successful at, at what we do. And there's not too many chances for us to criticize you or complain a lot of it's really just a matter of teaching you the right thing to do because sometimes until you face a certain situation it's difficult to kind of prepare you for it you know mm -hmm. like for instance we have a orthodontics appointment coming up well you do fantastic at your orthodontics you know you can go in there you can talk to the nurse you can talk to the doctor you interact with you know other patients that are there and you're because you've been doing it for so long you're an ace in that environment, you know, to the point that you're probably more comfortable talking to the doctor there than I am. 
So that's one area that you're very good at, and it, but it's because you've had a lot of exposure to it, a lot of practice. Probably, yeah. And that's the way courtesy is and in just about every instance. It's one of those things that, like a muscle, if you don't exercise it, it starts to atrophy and it's harder and harder to remember to do it. So you could try and do it all the time. You're better off. Email. All right. So here's a something that I get dinged on at work a lot really for. When I write emails, I write emails like I'm writing letters. I have a salutation. I have a greeting. I have a message body, you know, the entire message. And then I have a, a close and a conclusion to it and a signature to it. You know, I... I was taught in school that this is how you write a letter and I do it a lot. And as a result, my, my emails tend to be very long and very formal. I don't work in a very formal environment. So a lot of times when I do that to people, it kind of puts them on the defensive because they think a lot of people, when you're formal with them, they think that there's a disciplinary action or there's, because of my position with the company as well, because I'm upper management, there there's almost this sense of, oh, my God, he's doing this to document it for HR, for discipline reasons or something like that. And it's not that. It's just that's the way that I learned to write letters because if I'm going to engage you with a letter or an email, you deserve that level of attention and respect. Mm -hmm. Even my, my boss yells at me for that because I'll get one or two word responses from him and he'll be like, ah, too long, didn't read. It's like, okay, well, I don't know how to communicate in shorthand. It's just, I was, I was never taught that, you know, I communicate in a formal way because it's, to me, it's always been a sign of respect for the other person. The rest of the world doesn't always look at it like that though. Yeah. Maybe hopefully putting this out will, Get people to understand that a bit more. Oh, I highly doubt my boss watches our podcast. <laughs> it's wishful thinking, though. I'll give you that. So I think that we've covered pretty much everything we wanted to cover today. Uh, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and we'll get your closing remarks. Go for your closing remarks. Alrighty, to everyone out there, I just wanted to say that Everyone should probably relearn and reteach common courtesy because while you don't have to go to the extremes of common courtesy, it's good to at least instill in your teens for the rest of their lives about common courtesy so that, you know, the rest, every, everyone they encounter, you know, they're proper with them, they can gain better relationships, and ultimately have a better life. Okay. Good advice. Thank you. Um, before we go, I do want to beg folks, I mean, uh, remind <laughs> folks uh, that you can subscribe to the podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version of this podcast uh, listed as Insights into Teens. The video version of the podcast is listed as Insights into Things. And we're anywhere you can normally get a podcast. Um, also, uh, would ask folks to give us some feedback. Give us some specially show suggestions. We're, we've got a number of shows lined up for us, but there's n always a shortage of topics for us to talk about that we're always scrambling for. So if you come up with anything good that we should talk about or address or, or you know, readdress that we've talked about in the past, email us over at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can also get high-res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream five days a week, both on YouTube and on Twitch. On Twitch, you can find us at www.twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription. We'd appreciate if you threw that our way. It helps us to uh, pay the bills, and there are substantial bills associated with producing this podcast. Uh, you can also get audio versions of this podcast on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. 
We are also on Instagram at Instagram.com slash Insights into Things, where you can get links to all those profiles of our uh, hosts and much more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Very good. Now, before we go, I do want to point out that I often end the show on some random camera angle. And Madison here is always trying to figure out which camera angle it is because she likes to wave to the camera before I go to the outro, which is always the same camera angle. So the confusing part right now is we're on that camera. So I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to cut to the outro. That's all, folks. Bye, everyone. Another one in the books. We're out. <laughs> <laughs>